As we prepare to receive God's word, let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture reading is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you? hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In 1935, in the middle of the Great Depression, Langston Hughes wrote a short story called On the Road about a homeless black man, Sergeant, who has an encounter with Christ. Sergeant was trudging through the snow on a cold, dark night with wet, sopping shoes looking for help. He winds up knocking on the door of a church parsonage. The Reverend Mr. Dorset turns on the porch light, opens the door, but before Sergeant can even speak a word, Reverend Dorset is saying, I'm sorry, no. 
Go down this street four blocks, turn to your left, walk up seven, and you'll see the relief shelter. I'm sorry. No. And he shuts the door. Sergeant had, of course, already tried the relief shelter, and as he trudges on, he quickly comes, of course, to the church adjacent to the parsonage. Sergeant blinked. When he looked up, the snow fell into his eyes. He shook his head. He shook the snow from his coat sleeves, felt hungry, felt lost, felt not lost, felt cold. He walked up the steps of the church. He knocked at the door. No answer. He tried the handle. Locked. He put his shoulder against the door and his long body slanted like a ramrod with loud, rhythmic grunts like the grunts in a chain gang song he pushed against the door. I'm tired. Ah, hungry. Ah, I'm sleepy. Ah, I'm cold. I got to sleep somewhere. This here is a church, ain't it? Well, ah, eventually that door starts to break and a crowd of angry white onlookers starts to gather. The police are called. People are shouting at Sergeant who says, I know it's a white folks church, but I got to sleep somewhere. And with one more push, the door gives way right as two white cops arrive, run up the steps, and grab Sergeant. Sergeant grabbed, not for anything so weak as a broken door. He grabbed for one of the tall stone pillars beside the door, grabbed at and caught it and held it. The cops pulled and sergeant pulled. Most of the people in the street got behind the cops and helped them pull. Gradually, the big stone front of the church fell down. The walls and the rafters, the crucifix and the Christ. Then the whole thing fell down. The whole church fell down in the snow. Sergeant got out from under the church and went walking on up the street with the stone pillar on his shoulder. Sergeant thought he was alone, but listening to the crunch, crunch, crunch on the snow of his own footsteps, he heard other footsteps too, doubling his own. He looked around, and there was Christ walking beside him. The same Christ that had been on that cross at the church, still stone with a rough stone surface, walking along beside him, just like he was broken off the cross when the church fell down. Well, I'll be, said Sergeant. This here's the first time I ever seen you off the cross. Yes, said Christ, crunching his feet in the snow. You had to pull the church down to get me off the cross. You glad, said Sergeant? I sure am, said Christ. And they both laughed. You did a good job, said Christ. They have kept me nailed on that cross for nearly 2,000 years. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison 
and visited you. This just does not seem right. Our Christ is mighty, holy, powerful, free. When he comes off the cross, Christ ascends way into heaven. None of this trudging through cold, wet snow. Today is Christ the King Sunday, for crying out loud. The day we proclaim and remember that Christ reigns in glory. It's the culmination of our entire church year. It is the New Year's Eve of the church. That means that we know where we are ultimately headed for a day when Christ will come in glory and rule forever over all things in heaven and on earth. Hungry, thirsty, naked, poor, sick, imprisoned. That's pretty undignified for the king of all creation. What sort of king would go hungry or unclothed? Jesus does make for a very strange king. Because in this passage from Matthew's gospel, it almost seems like he has more in common with Sargent, the homeless man wandering the streets begging for help, than he has ever had with the enshrined figure on the cross, adorned and sanitized and protected by locked double doors. When he speaks to the disciples here, he says, this is me. I'm the one who was hungry. I am the one who was thirsty. I am the one who was a stranger, naked, sick, in prison. The way that you treat people who find themselves in these situations, whether it's by chance, by poor decisions, by systemic injustice, by tragedy, the way that you treat these members of my family is the way that you treat me. They have kept me nailed on a cross for nearly 2,000 years. The words were written by a poet 85 years ago. But we run the same risk today of trying to keep Jesus inside our church high and detached and revered from afar instead of seeing Christ out in the world and letting him change the way that we live. We keep Christ nailed on that cross when we can't see his face in our neighbor. We keep Christ nailed on that cross when we shelter ourselves from the realities of the world and assume that our Lord offers escape instead of engagement. We keep Christ nailed on that cross when we ignore or try to rationalize away his words just as you did it to one of the least of these. You did it to me. As we get closer in these days to our Advent season, I know we are all grieving that we won't be here together 
like we had hoped. We won't be in the same room at the same time, enjoying the comforting sights and sounds of corporate worship. But we have more opportunity than ever to find Christ all around us. And more opportunity than ever to serve the Lord himself by lifting up our neighbors. If you want to find Christ our King, You never have to look very far. He is out on the streets. He's in sopping wet socks and hungry bellies. He is the lonely prisoner and the grieving mother. He is the exhausted nurse and the terrified patient. He is every broken heart and every dead end. And are there ever broken hearts in the world right now? Truly I tell you, Just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. When in doubt, Say yes. It just might be Jesus himself. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Friends, go in peace. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. And as you do, may the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit keep you and sustain you now and always. Amen.